Well, talks of a possible ceasefire between Israel and Hamas and hostage release deal have ended. They ended yesterday without a breakthrough. Negotiators in Cairo, they're trying to secure a deal in time for the Muslim holy month of Ramadan. Well, yesterday, President Biden said Israel had agreed to the deal and it was now in the hands of Hamas. Meanwhile, the U.S. military carried out another airdrop of humanitarian aid into Gaza, parachuting in over 36,000 meals. Our MTS tie-up is following the latest from Israel. Emery, good morning. Well, as the humanitarian situation in Gaza continues to spiral out of control, aid agencies are reporting 15 babies have died from malnutrition in the northern part of the besieged Palestinian territory, where around 300,000 people are also on the brink of famine. Now, the one United Nations aid agency that would have the capacity to help ramp up aid distribution in Gaza is the UN Agency for Palestinian Refugees, also known as UNRWA, which has around 13,000 staff in Gaza alone. But Israel is locked in a bitter fight with UNRWA after Israeli leaders accused about a dozen of the agency's employees of involvement in the October 7th attacks, prompting multiple Western countries, including the U.S., to pull hundreds of millions of dollars in funding, making the already dire humanitarian situation in Gaza that much worse. Now, this week, UNRWA released a statement detailing how hundreds of its staff detained by the Israeli military following the October 7th attacks, sometimes held for weeks and even months, faced, and I'm quoting here, torture, severe ill treatment, abuse, and sexual exploitation by Israeli security forces. The statement went on to say that some of its staff were, and again, I'm quoting here, forced to sign confessions under torture and ill treatment while being asked about the Hamas attacks. Now, the Israeli military has strenuously denied any allegations of abuse and torture at its detention facilities and accused UNRWA of, quote, false equivalence with the atrocities that were committed by Hamas. Now, these sparring statements amid very serious allegations comes as Israel welcomed a report by the UN's envoy on sexual violence, which found, quote, reasonable grounds to believe that sexual assaults occurred on October 7th, but also rejected the very same report's findings that Palestinians held in Israeli detention centers, faced widespread sexual abuse and intimidation. Anne-Marie. MTS, thank you.